everyone from Forward Progress. I'm Rob Pizzola. This is On the Clock. It's the show where I put myself in the shoes of an NFL general manager and I draft for their team just as they're going to be doing on April 27th. And today we are drafting for the Los Angeles Chargers. 10 and 7 a season ago. Obviously, big time loss in the playoffs to the Jacksonville Jaguars where they squandered a huge lead. And I mentioned that we are drafting for the Los Angeles Chargers because I am joined by Chargers super fan from the Mayo Media Network, Jeff Feinberg. Jeff, sorry to bring up that playoff loss, but can't do the intro without it. It's very fair. It's now part of the narrative. A year ago, that was just the insane week 17 loss to Oakland. Now it's the Jacksonville loss. Um, I'm still like really not over it. Truth be told, Robert, they've kind of broken me. Um, my faith in their ceiling is is pretty much shattered. Is pretty much shattered. You can tell he's a Chargers super fan because he still refers to them as Oakland as well. He's not gotten with the times of the Las Vegas Raiders. It's the Oakland Raiders uh, for Jeff. This is not the first in this series of On the Clock. We've done a ton of these so far. Make sure you're subscribed to the Forward Progress channel going forward so you get notifications whenever we put up a new mock draft leading up to draft day. And of course, we do have the On The Clock playlist. You can check that out for any of the past ones. Let's get into it, Jeff. You're going to make the calls today. I know you have trouble with decision making, so I might have to push you on some stuff. I don't mean to be, I don't mean, mean to be that guy, but I got to keep the show moving. But for starters, before we get into it here, the Chargers are going to be picking uh late in the first round 21st not super late but 21st in the first round general strategy on what you're doing in the gm role do you are you a guy that wants to fill a position of need thinks the chargers need to fill a position of need do you draft based on value do you look for trades whether that's trading up trading down just an overall philosophy on how you're drafting the chargers today the Chargers are in a position where there's a small pocket of positions and in which they would probably just take the best player available, Rob. Also, the Chargers have a new reality that they're probably going to be facing by the time training camp opens, and that is a elite QB1 contract in the QB in this new elite QB1 contract marketplace. Uh, and it's a team that's very star heavy. They have, I think. The amount of money that they've pushed forward between Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa, and Mike Williams into next year with some restructuring, it's it's mind-boggling. So at some point, they're going to have to pay a piper on, on um, some of the things they've done over the past couple years, Rob. And there's a lot of talk, and he almost I've almost never heard it from the Chargers themselves, but there's almost been some rumblings in the little I've heard out of Telesco's mouth. Um, that trading back is probably a real possibility for them to get another pick inside the top hundred. Again, there's a new reality coming forward where they're going. You don't even, not even necessarily a starter, but just to some quality depth to the team. Once that Herbert contract is on the books, like I've said it a few times to repeat myself, there's a new sort of a cap reality that's going to come with the chargers. That being said, you execute a pick like drafting Justin Herbert, and you could only be so lucky that he's worth the contract that they would probably have to pay him by the time camp opens this year. Of course. I mean, it's it's not exactly a – it's a problem in the sense that they finally have to pay an elite quarterback, but it's not a problem in the sense that they do have that elite quarterback. Let's take a look at the depth chart, Jeff, uh, really quickly here. I'll start on the offensive side of the ball. Mike Williams, Josh Palmer, Keenan Allen. Then you have that offensive line, Slater, Sawyer, Lindsley, Zion Johnson, who they drafted last year, Trey Pipkins, Gerald Everett, Donald Parham, both at tight end, Herbert, Austin Eckler, Josh Kelly, Isaiah Spiller, and Xander Horvath at fullback. Looking at the offense, what do you feel is a position or positions that they might have to address in this draft? Oh, there's two that stand out to me. There's wide receiver. When I mentioned the Piper, that's probably coming calling there. And just this new NFL reality where receivers are in vogue and you can maybe offset some of the bigger money contracts at receiver 
if you're able to now get a guy who's going to play for five years on that rookie deal. Uh, you know, maybe the totality of our receiver cap wouldn't, you know, can can come down. So receiver, I don't know a team in the league that isn't now thinking about drafting receivers when you see the contracts that get out to productive receivers. And really, it's maybe the best place to beat the system at the moment, right? In terms of productivity yep. versus what the open market will pay you. For me, though, Rob, maybe it's just a child of growing up under Antonio Gates. There's like a philosophical way in which I want the Chargers to play football. Maybe, you know, I don't play that shitty game Madden anymore. Apparently, it hasn't improved one iota since I stopped playing it years ago just because of father time and life. But feeding a tight end is like essential to my being. And there's an opportunity in this draft for the Chargers to get a real seam buster, a big body guy that can, you know, match up with anybody and be that safety blanket uh, up the seams for Justin Herbert. So I am so attracted to that possibility. It's been a couple years of socks and underwear with Rashawn Slater and uh, last year's Zion Johnson. But this year, there's a real nice chance I'm getting like a cool new bike with a receiver I, I, or a tight end in, in the first round. There's also places they can go on defense, but the last couple of years they've catered to Herbert with the first round pick. Will they do that again? I kind of think they will. So let's take let's take a look at that defense really quickly. I agree wide receiver with you. Tight end, I would say not so much a need, but I like your style here where you want them to play a certain way. Oh, tight end is there. Offensive line pretty solid like they've addressed it two years in a row you have trey pipkins at right tackle i think is a bit of a problem but overall decent they still believe now, he's an an ascending player though in pipkins they wanted to keep him they saw some things they liked as the season wound out and um Sawyer, who replaced uh slater last year was a seventh round pick one of the like a true bright spot for the chargers last year in a, in a season that was really weird rob uh and inconsistent was getting a seventh round pick and him sort of holding the Ford at left tackle with Slater being healthy. He gets to go to a natural position at guard. Maybe that can be an upgrade, but um, yeah, look into this draft. There's, there's probably defensive holes as well. All right, let's take a look at, at what we think those defensive holes are uh, top to bottom. Obviously there's a lot of household recognizable names on this deep defense. Joey Bosa, Derwin James, they brought in Eric Kendricks in free agency. Kenneth Murray, they drafted in the first round a few years ago, Shit. hasn't really lived up to the hype. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to I'll just call it out for what it is. He's not been very good. And no. we got Khalil Mack on the defense as well. <clears throat> but, okay, Jeff, let's look at this as a whole. Paint the picture for us. Spots that they can really improve here on defense. Well, like to the naked eye, even like the casual, I just watch on Sunday football fan, you would say there's probably a nose tackle that the Chargers could get. And there's the young kid out of uh, Pitt, Kinsey, who's been mocked to them a lot, Rob. Yeah, uh, Kalia Kansi. Kansi, still a bit of a, a bit of a project in some respects, but would line up with the team need and, and just like has the body where the first round, like just check marks there. Also, there's um, there's Edge. Edge would probably be another position. And they might lose Bryce Callahan, their third corner, Rob. Uh, and uh, Nasir Adderley retired last year. So there's a lot of places they can go. I am so silly and stupid, maybe, to say this. But I'm still of the mind that, like, I don't I, So far, it's sort of been... Staley is so cocky in what he can do defensively, right? That it's almost like I still see that living in the building itself where he's like, no, those front end assets, give them to the offense. I'm so cocky in what I can do defensively. That really only showed in one game, the home game versus Miami. And then statistically it showed in a primetime game versus the Colts. But Nick Foles, I was like, uh, can't even count that game. If you know what I'm talking about around Christmas. Like yep, a true I, excellent defensive performance with a defensive-minded head coach only showed up one time. But uh, it would be the, the, the tackle out of Pitt or the versatile Miles Murphy out of Clemson who might not even make it to the Chargers. Uh, he might be the player, though, Rob, who would probably make the Chargers question if they want to go offense because I do believe he 
he can fit very nicely into how Staley likes to do things. I still suspect the, the safety, the Browns cut John, uh, Johnson will be a charger by the time the season starts. That's a widely reported rumor. He had great success with the Rams under Staley. That seems to now be a bit of a chargers need. The chargers flirted with him in free agency. So that's where I see the chargers addressing your potential safety need in this draft will be happening with that signing connecting that dot, but Murphy would probably be the defensive player of choice for me. Okay, fair enough. We're going to get into the draft here. It'll be interesting to see because at 21, um, I, I've done a ton of these PFF mock drafts now. You get all sorts of different options available to you he here when you're later in the first round at 21. Uh, Kalia Kansi would be interesting, but just to point out to the audience too, he's not your prototypical like massive nose tackle player, right? He's like a 280 pounder who's versatile. You could play in all sorts of positions in the front seven and we'll make that pick if it, you know, we'll get to that if it comes there. But that would be an interesting one because the Chargers, they've been run on for several years now and they haven't really had that huge presence in the defense. They'd be addressing a position of need but is it the exact type of player they're looking for? So we'll see when we get there, but we're doing the same settings as we usually do, picking for the Los Angeles Chargers at 21st overall, seven round mock draft. We're going to start very slow just to see how the opening picks go. We're keeping the same settings as usual. And of course, as always, let us know how you think we fared on this mock draft. I have thick skin. Jeff has thick skin. Believe me, I have thick skin for the Cincinnati Bengals fans. The New England Patriots fans, who else just absolutely tore a strip off me? The Seattle Seahawks fans in the last few weeks. Regardless, Did anyone compliment you? Was any fan base like, great work, Rob? You nailed it. So, so far, the Chiefs and Eagles have gotten good feedback. Now, I did those with Eric Eager of Sumer Sports, who happens to be one of the most intellectual football minds on the planet. So it's not a surprise that he got, um, you know, glowing recommendations for those but overall my general philosophy is not always like take the positions of need and I feel like oftentimes teams have a strength and they can really improve that strength to the point where it becomes like super dominant for them and fan bases are very hung up on needs I'll tell you that right now they're like oh no how could you possibly draft a corner in the first round we need an edge rusher we need this and it's like well that player is not available so anyways, let, let us know. But is it corner and receiver? Like, aren't they the new evergreen positions? Like you can almost never have too many of them now with how the league works. The chargers, I mean, give me all the corn. If you, if, the, if someone says a charger should just be loading up at corner and receiver, I couldn't argue that for a second. I don't think there's a team in the league you, that could. It really depends on the team. Like look at, look at the Eagles last year as an example. The Eagles loaded up on like great defensive linemen all year. They continued to add to them as well. Robert Quinn, uh, Damakong Su, who they brought in midseason, right? Like they had just such a great presence of rotational players that they could plug in. And they lost Derek Barnett to an ACL tear. They still had that. And that got them like far. Led the league in sacks, dominant pass rush. There's you don't really have to like solidify every single position on the team as long as sometimes you have like a really, you know, big position of strength. But uh, we're going to start the draft here at 21st. Just for the record, PFF identifies the needs of the Chargers as wide receiver, linebacker and cornerback. So we'll, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. But the Carolina Panthers are on the clock. We're starting it slowly here. This typically goes Bryce Young, number one, which it has. And then. Anthony Richardson, number two now. Jalen Carter at three. And the Colts probably C.J. Stroud. So we got three of the top four picks being corners. And we'll likely get Will Levis off the board here with either the Raiders or the Falcons. Usually, there we go. So we got eight picks in. The top four QBs are out. I will give you the option. Nobody's really been wanting to trade up in the draft so far. No. We can't, Rob. Okay. Uh, fair enough. So we're going to no increase way. this. You can't. You can't. There's, there, I, I agree with you. The, the, I mean, you typically trade up to get that QB that you want. Aside from that, I'll, I'll, 
I'm with you. So we're going, we're going fast here. All the way to 21. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's fast for me, okay. even. Well, we you don't you don't have to see every player that came off the board. We can't we can take a quick look at them really quickly. But which tight ends or receivers went, I think is important for me. Did Addison go? Did uh Okay, so Dalton Kincaid went at 18 uh, for the Lions. Yeah, see, I've been seeing that a lot too. Do you believe the Lions just gonna make a move like that? I, I do for another show. Think- Sorry. Ah, bothers me they took that that's that'd be a personal like uh fanboy. And then if the Chargers did draft the tight end, Rob, the happiest people in the world would be my nine buddies in my home league, like my best friends, because now I would just overdraft that guy forever, like forever, forever. Yep. I'm an idiot like that. Uh, but here we go. So Kincaid went, did, um, did any receivers go? Yes. So we got JSN at, um, who at 13 to the jets, Quentin Johnson at 14. So basically where we're at now is top available players are Kalia Kansi of Pittsburgh. Deontay Banks is a corner from Maryland, typically goes in this range. Same with Brian Branch, the safety from Alabama. Anything else here would likely be a, a reach. Now you have Michael Mayer of Notre Dame, um, who typically goes towards the end of the first round. There are trade options on the board. Walk what's me through tra- what's going on. Th- what, the okay. trade option? Is Jordan Addison available? Because I didn't see him on that short list. Um, Jordan Addison is available. So Jordan Addison, PFF obviously does it. That's why he did it. We're not drafting based off who PFF likes. We're drafting based off of who Jeff Feinberg likes. Uh, first look at him. Small receiver, 5'11", 173. Uh, very crafty route runner. High-end number two receiver is what PFF thinks he is. Comparison, Emmanuel Sanders would be the comp that they're using for NFL for Jordan Addison. Him or uh, Quentin Johnson, who you mentioned were taken, seem to be the two Chargers, the receivers, or Zay Flowers, who I believe the Chargers would be targeting. What am I getting to trade out of this pick? So basically, the Texans are offering you 33, which you could take 33, 65, and 104, and that has a pretty decent chance of going through. Or a future pick as well, if you didn't want to accumulate for this year. It's up It's up to you. But basically, you're getting compensation of a late first rounder, uh, a late, or sorry, an early second, an early third, and an early fifth. Oh, geez, this is pressure, Rob. Has anyone been trading back? Like, is that frowned yes. upon? I feel like for... For content, I should just stay stay put and make the pick. It, it's it's not frowned upon. So we've had trade backs. We had uh, the first ever player trade in this one, where the Eagles traded for Chris Jones during the draft and gave up some picks. So we've had it all so far on 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 the clock. But I do and have how the thing here. works. Houston's the only team showing potential interest in me here. So the Bucks are, but their next pick is fifty. And I don't know that you'd want to drop down to. 50. Yeah. Okay. So sure. Let's um. Let's send this offer. Uh, as I said, the Chargers they need as many top hundred picks as they can get. All right. I mean, do you are do you want me to throw in a pick from? Do you want it all from this year's draft? Do you care if it's? Yeah. I mean, draft? I I'd rather I'm drafting today for you. I'm I'm yeah. Unless I'm getting okay. the pick next year when we redo this thing in my pocket. No. We we're not we're not. So I'm firing it off. Texans take it. So we're skipping to 33 now, which will be our next pick. And Jordan Addison went off at 27. I mean, this was this was murderer's row of picks for us, but what are you going to do? Uh, Addison, Cansey, Michael Mayer, three banger. Uh, we're here at 33 right now. So was Miles have- was Miles Murphy selected? You you seem to really have uh, some guys that you've targeted so far. Uh, Murphy, I don't think so. No, may, maybe he was. Maybe it was much earlier. He could have been, yeah. I, yeah. I think it's M-Y. Oh, L-E-S. you're right, yeah. That, that, that's my bad. Yeah, it is. I think he's off the board. I think he went much earlier than than this. Yeah, 450 I mean, to the Packers. 
I would be tempted then, honestly, Rob, to take the edge from LSU here. Uh, BJ Ujari. Ojolari. His brother, his brother plays for the Giants, Aziz Ojolari. Um, you got yeah. edge rusher. You got kick corners. Josh Downs is the highest receiver available. Um, who I no, know some but people it, it might like, be an epic fail. Like I would be getting roasted by the Chargers fan base for missing out on all those receivers and those two tight ends. Probably we gotta, we gotta, we, we're gonna select BJ. Okay, BJ Ojulari, edge rusher, LSU, coming down. Pick fifty four coming up next as we fire through a bunch here. You see what it's like in the pressure seat now, Jeff. I've done a few of these on my own, just talking to myself, sweating, feeling feeling every single pick. All right. We have Diane Henley, linebacker, Washington State. Um, if you want me to target a specific position, I can do that yeah, for you as uh, well. Show me the tight ends and receivers at the moment. Okay. So... Nathaniel Dell would be a bit of a reach here. Um, uh, I would likes Luke Musgrave lot. from uh, Oregon State. Checking his uh, his usual his ADP in like regular mock drafts is typically mid forties. So this, this is a pretty vast Musgrave, I would say. Yeah, I, I'm a little disappointed. I guess That's the Penn State. At him. Okay, so. The Penn State he had a, a knee injury last year, which is why Musgrave is probably. Uh, yeah, listen, he'd be a seam buster. Go, go. Right. He'd be a straight up that seam for us as a vertical threat um, type of player. I think would be perfect for Justin Herbert. I see they mentioned here that he, he has the size and the speed uh, to win. So Musgrave would be my pick. I'm curious when that. Um, the Penn State tight end, I guess, probably just would have nipped off the board before me here, but uh, Musgrave. Okay. Broke 20 miles per hour at the senior bowl. That's elite speed, just like you, Jeff, in your senior year as well. Broke 20 miles an hour. Rumor has it as well. Um, Darnell Washington, Georgia, went a tight end before us. Sam Laporta, Iowa. How early did we lose another <laughs> tight end? I don't know. I, I, I must have missed it along this. I mean, Rob, I've seen some guys say there's as much as like eight to 10 starting tight ends in this draft, which is pretty, which is pretty crazy. Shades of Jared Cook, man. Would you want another Jared Cook? This is Musgrave. They gave a comp as Jared Cook. They did. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just breaking me. It's it a lot of drops. It changed. No, no, this is the pick. This is I the mean, pick. Okay. All right. What? You want to talk Luke me Musgrave. off it? Talk me off Jeff it. Jeff wants. No, no, it's done. It's in. We're... There's no reversing course now. We're in. You you win that tight end. You got your tight end. There's your boy. Yes. You still yeah, got a bunch of picks go, to work um... with you. We're at 65. Yeah, we got some extra picks. Uh, this, is my, this is my pick. So this has to be the pick. This is what we gave up the player for was this pick rob yeah yes it is might be having buyer's remorse on my trade <laughs> well i mean listen we got michael wilson from stanford at wide receiver here which is a little high honestly i, I don't think he would actually go at 65 in real life he's more of like an 80 to 90 type of guy um yeah, I don't know what we're going to do here, Jeff, but we, we don't have any trade offers. We have Diane Henley, who is a, a linebacker. I know you might be scarred from linebackers because of Kenneth Murray, but this, I mean. Can I see the corners I, that are available? I, like early 40s. And some, sure. Can, can I see the corners? I just want to look for the comp on Henley. Shades of Dre Greenlaw, man. Oh, that's a good receiver that just went so, the pick before me from Tennessee. I don't, wouldn't have minded that one. Jeez. Um, what, what, what? Uh, yeah, it's tough, man. Is um, is uh, 
DJ Turner from Michigan on that corner list there? I probably lost him. I highly, highly doubt it. Yeah, he's got to see him there. The, the, the Lions. The Lions. Love the, the Lions, Lions draft. Are just Rob. screwing you. Love the Lions <laughs> draft here. Too and bad we're drafting the Chargers instead of the Lions. Yeah, I love what the Lions are up to. Um, okay, so I bring me back to the receivers. Okay. Get you back to the receivers here. I think it's really Nathaniel Dell in this spot, who's a small receiver, undersized, like speed burner type of player. Yeah, it's the Chargers need. So they had no speed last year. Can't keep anyone honest. Uh, Mike Williams for his like high point ability is not going to win a race. So let's go load him up. No, it's exactly what the Chargers need. Yeah, there was a risk for the Bills signed. In... Who's the receiver the Bills signed in free agency? It's not very good, but he was fast as hell. And I really oh. wanted the Chargers to get him. And now my mind is just, I forget. Um, it'll come to me at some point. I don't know for sure, but I don't know if you, I know you get really excited by the comps because I get really excited by the comps as well. And they, the, the comp for Nathaniel Dell was Darnell Mooney. Yeah, I don't really, that doesn't, um, I can't get swayed by that. I'll, I'll take Nathaniel Dell here. Okay. 65 is in. We go down to 85. Jeff is sweating. He's been turned up very quickly on this draft. 85. We have Garrett Williams as a corner option. We have another receiver option in Michael Wilson. Like I said, might be too high, but if you're really, really sold on adding more, we can. Um, safety help. Oh, bro, wow, this is easy. Should I just take Tomlinson's nephew here? I, I honestly... I mean, it it seems like a very obvious pick because of <laughs> the the roots to the organization. It's not that that much of a like. So PF loves Travis Hodges Tomlinson, loves oh, listen, him. I got, his ADP I is right around his actual ADP. Oh, let's say I thought I had my Horn Frogs LT helmet behind me, but I don't. Um, yeah, I got to make this pick, Rob. I'm sorry if that like it's a positional need. It works. It, like he's gonna be great in the building. Uh, we got a legacy to uphold here. Let's get the fan base excited. Plus, sell some jerseys, baby. Ladanian Let's go. Gets, see, see how drunk Ladanian gets. He wears like a stripper cowboy hat to those like BCS playoff games. He gets we gets he gets sauced. I will say that's that's my kind of guy. That's the kind of guy I wish I rooted for a lot more when he was a player. I'm liking um, how this draft is worked out as I come back on the clock with another Texans pick in the fourth round. Like now I'm happier, a little happier about the trade than it was a few minutes ago. Um, this might sound silly, but I, I oh, it's everything I want. Can I see the tight end board again? <laughs> okay. Shoe oh, Shoemaker's still available. Yeah, I, and it, it's a pretty steep drop off after him. I'm going to tell you this, Jeff, you got to be ready to embrace the wrath of an entire fan base if you take two tight ends in the first four rounds here. With the like I can already envision the comments of like is this guy this guy comes out and talks about how Staley has not been able to assemble a defense and he's drafting two tight ends in the first four rounds. I gave him my first round and I just took a corner. And I this is this is a luxury pick, Rob. It's from the trade. It, okay, it's right. up to I you can't. but i would uh i like this pick it almost makes me wish i could give back um musgrave and just take shoemaker here at this slot i'm not even kidding but you know that's all part of the fun of the draft right of course you don't know who's going to be available at this yeah. point and not so i mean it's an option if it this is your draft man no this no no draft. i'm trying to like be realistic but i would yeah. love I mean, they still have Everett in there now, so I guess it would be unnecessary. Um, right. Geez, this would be a really interesting spot, Rob. They could go safety, but I did mention that safety is sort of something that I really do believe, unless they're knocked off their socks with value in the draft. 
Um, I don't yeah. think they would go there. We could take another corner or another mm-hmm. receiver. Um, Will Clapp, now I'm even trying to think of like important backups. Like Will Clapp had to play a lot last year at center because Lindsley is getting up there and it's always like a game time thing. So Eli Ricks is still available, which um, I would say like having done a bunch of these drafts and never getting to the fourth round, like getting to the fourth round, he's never in the fourth round available. So I'm not suggesting you have to do it. I'm just pointing you out. You mentioned corner. Eli Ricks is still there from Alabama who typically goes in the range of like 80 to 90, I would say. Yeah. I mean, do I need, I mean, can I see the linebackers? Cause you know, now it's time where you draft a good college linebacker, right? Like aren't linebackers, the running backs of defense in terms of the draft now, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. Positionally. I mean, so you have Dorian Williams from Tulane seems like after him and Ivan Pace jr. There's a pretty steep drop off. So if you were going to get a linebacker, I I do think the time would be now. You want to see the comp? Going to swim in one direction or another? No, but I'm also surprised that um, I was really hoping to can, like you go back to the, well, yeah, tell me the comp, but there's something else I noticed there as well. Okay, so they're saying with Dorian Williams, he is one of the best coverage linebackers in the class. Has a huge wingspan, great foot speed. Um, he can improve on taking on blocks. So he's not the best in terms of taking on blocks. They compare him to Jay on Brown, who has been a productive NFLer, I would say. Not that I want to be beholden to it, but I did notice something when you were just at the PFF Best Available. Mm-hmm. And I was really hoping, this is on my little notes here, um, that I was really hoping to weasel out in a in a moment oh geez so where did i you just said julian scruggs up there is a guard from pittsburgh yep. Juice, uh he's been oh in no for, i have we had was Juice scruggs the center at penn state yeah plays and multiple, uh, yeah oh, plays yeah, multiple yeah. positions center guard bit of a combo he's come in for a pre-draft visit to the chargers rob so uh that name sort of caught my eye and even Ronnie Hickman, the safety from from um, Ohio State, you have there. He'll probably this would be right around where he he might go. He spends a lot of so time. Down I will in say the this: box. he's a down in the box defender. That's exactly sort of how the Chargers, um, you know, aggressive coverage, aggressive pursuit. He's the type of player the Chargers would like. So you're picking next after this at one twenty five. I'm going to say this just based off of having, you know, seen where people are mocked. Juice Scruggs and Ronnie Hickman are in this range because PFF loves these guys. But typically speaking, they wouldn't be picked until like the fifth or sixth round. I'm not telling you that you can't pick them. I'm just letting you know that typically speaking, I do see these guys available a little bit later on. All right, well, I'll let you have influence here. You think Eli Eli Ricks from from Alabama, good SEC corner. There's Mahomes. We gotta we gotta overwhelm, you know, with Tomlinson and and Hicks. These are guys. Um, here's the thing about corner and the Chargers, Rob. So Asante Samuel Jr., second round pick from two years ago, seems like a five star, like second round pick, a guy they really trust, despite being quite undersized. Now I say, do they trust him? They, they do play with the matchups because he is undersized. Uh, Jackson had the same injury as me, and I'm not saying that to brag, but, like, we blew out our kneecaps, like, blown out. Uh, I don't know what the Chargers can expect from him, to be perfectly honest. After giving him all that money, it's a pretty intensive rehab. I've gotten quite lazy with it, and stairs are, are not fun. Um and Michael Davis, who they gave a contract to a couple of years ago, but I think he's in the last year of it. So corner, yeah, corner's always, it's still going to be a need. They play against Mahomes and Josh McDaniels and all the fun I'm, stuff. I'm not lying to you. So Eli Ricks, they project him second or third round, but there's injury concerns with him that would see him slip. Um, I, but I, I, I've never seen him available in the fourth round, honestly. 
Yeah, I've already mentioned the issues the Chargers probably do have at corner. We're going to lose. They're going to lose Bryce Callahan, who is a very solid nickel corner. Uh, let's let's do it up. We go back on the clock again shortly, too. Yep. Eli Ricks is in. We're back on the clock. I'm hoping I didn't shaft you out of one of the players that you really would have wanted, but I do believe that both Scr- uh, Juice Scruggs just got drafted two picks before us. But not surprised. Pete Carroll. Like, that's a perfect Pete Carroll pick. <laughs> you still have oh, Ronnie Hickman. Yeah. You still have your boy at tight end available to you as well. You yeah, have no, interior... we're still in the fourth round, though. I can't take him yet. Uh, yeah, Ronnie, exactly Ronnie Hickman Roy. is... Pro- oh, but well, we're going... Have I kind of overwhelmed the secondary here, though, Rob? You might have, and that's the only reason I pointed out Jacqueline Roy here, who I think is a big boy interior defender from LSU. All right, well, we went to LSU um, in the We have in the first him 63305. Yeah, we went to LSU. Defensive tackle, played a ton. Of... I mean, thank God we find they finally gave up on Jerry Tillery. I'm honestly shocked at how he made it um, as long as he did. <laughs> yeah, um, I think you could go tons of ways here. Linebacker? But, you know, let's check out who we got available at linebacker. We still have Dorian Williams there. So neither of our linebackers are gone. Yeah. There's been a lot at corner in this draft. Yeah, we've addressed the secondary. What about wide receiver? Tyler Scott from Cincinnati. Um, that name is familiar to me where it says you, he, he, wow, this, this is actually, um, just checking consensus mock drafts right now on other sites. He goes almost always before 80 and we're at 125 here. Can you profile him for me for a second? I hope that they have enough. I, I don't know that they'll have enough info on him because he's a, he's more of a later round guy, but no. Uh, I don't have a comparable. He's a former running back. He offers a gear that is coveted at the next level. So he's a he's a burner as well. 5'10", 177. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm pretty unfamiliar with this player. Yeah, same. Uh, but he's like, what, a bit of a, a hybrid, like, gadget player? I would, that's what I would, that's what I'm yeah, taking away go. from Kellen, This is like Kellen Moore is probably banging the table right now for this, Rob. What are you you've talking about? He's plays, not... You've seen those disaster, those plays turn into disaster plenty. Kellen Moore is knocking on, on, on Zeke's door right now, seeing if he'll come in so he can hand him the ball 24 times a game. That's what the Kellen Moore experience is like. That was a McCarthy thing. It's not really more. Tyler Scott, we good with that? Yeah, let's go. I mean, now I don't have to worry about receiver for the rest of this draft. Yep. You're going to be going down to 156. You got three picks left in this draft. We're towards the end of round five here. Listen, Jeff. Ronnie, I, I still think see, I... I still see his name here. My next pick isn't for a while. I won't see him again. This is where I could do it, but I've gone a tight end in two receivers. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not really. I've, I'm happy with the corner. Ronnie Hickman is still there. Yep. Probably better off draft. This is where I could draft like a slob interior. I think. Though. Yeah. Well, I, I'll. Yeah. I don't know that Keandre Coburn is a slob or anything like that. I'm not going to go out and call him. No, a I didn't slob. mean it like that. I just meant like just give me um, a big boy. Yeah, a big boy that's coachable and let's let's go high motor. So he's six two three thirty two. His role was a nose tackle. Um, yeah, he's 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 the guy. He he's your guy if you want him. And check that hometown there, Rob. We're bringing him home. There you go. 
fit right in. More jersey sales. Keandre Coburn, good with that? Yeah. Okay. Interior defense right there. We're going to pick 200 next. We're flying through. We'll see who's available at pick 200. Now we're getting into like, I'm not going to pretend I know anything about these prospects. I'm taking an offensive lineman with a little bit of versatility. Like that would be the ideal pick right now. Okay. Well, let's, let's see if we can get you that. So interior, interior guy is what you're looking for. Yeah. No one worth my spot here. Well, we got Jake Andrews who is um, up there. Antonio Maffi of UCLA, who is, um, let me see if I could find his actual ADP. Antonio, it's not Antonio. Apologies. I'm just very confused with this. This is uh, my last or second last pick. Second last pick. Second last pick as well. Yeah. I mean, you can't go, you can't have eight picks and not just take like a, uh, uh, like an interior guard center combo or something here. Of these three, Anthony Bradford has the highest actual uh, ADP in other mock drafts. The other LSU seems to be the school of, uh, I think we took a couple LSU players, right? Yeah, first uh, round pick. I don't know much about LSU. him. 6'4", 332. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean honestly, we're just I basically... I'd be... I mean, I would just be lying to, like, say I know who... who these guys are at this point. So I just need the um, positional fit with the biggest ceiling. And you're telling me that's Bradford. So I guess Bradford we'll do it up. Bradford is coming down and we're going to get to our final pick in round seven here. Might just take another is, one of those guys, which is where every single person asks me if Stetson Bennett is still available. Okay, so our top guys that have fell in this draft, edge rusher, Yasir Abdullah, which I think this is a massive fall for him. Yeah, he typically has a position of 145. And he's so what's here at two. He got like caught on the smoke, or what, what's the deal? That's he probably ripped a bong and like teams don't wanna don't wanna go near him now. I'm not saying that Yasir Abdullah actually ripped the bong, by the way, people. Don't get upset with Yeah, me. I didn't mean it like that. Um, I mean, I guess for me, it would just, yeah, I guess Abdullah, just based on that rank and, and uh, ADP, would give me a nice grade. But positionally, uh, Jacob Slade from Michigan State or uh, Jonah, Jonah Tevi there, or if I'm pronouncing that right, from San Diego State. You, you make the call. Jeff, you make the call. It's it's your draft. You've already butchered it enough for the Chargers fans. Messing around. Yeah, I'll take the... uh, Can you open up this Yasir Abdullah? Like, has something happened to him? Uh, Typically speaking, there's like one or two guys just talking draft boards in these these mocks. Um, He is a pure outside edge rusher. Uh, He's undersized but has some juice, 59 pressures on 360, 306 pass rushing snaps last season. So that's what we know about him. He's got pretty consistently well-graded at the college level from a pass rushing standpoint. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. can never have too many of these guys. Just sack Mahomes right. once and you'll be a good pick. There we go. Yasir Abdullah rounds out the draft. Our seven rounds. I'm very interested to see how PFF especially rates your tight end pick. Um, but importantly, how they rate the entire draft overall. They are analyzing it. And they will be putting together a grade here in one second. How do you think you did overall, Jeff? Are you satisfied with this draft? I mean, at first I didn't like the trade. I wish I... The second round tight end pick I'd like to have back. I would have made that a receiver mm. would have just maybe sent us in a bit of okay. a different direction, but so they like the, the body. Trade. The chargers need, the, they need the bodies in here. They, they, they don't hate the Luke Musgrave pick. They don't hate it. B 
Very good. Travius, I don't know if they factored in the Tomlinson roots and heritage into the A there, but so far, so good. We lose you a little bit at Anthony Bradford, which you wanted an interior offensive lineman. Uh, and then you get the A plus at the end for Yasir Abdullah, positional value. A draft, Jeff. PFF I mean, thinks listen, you've done, the only, done a good job. The only sp- space, Rob, where I literally like made the pick for like to PFF grade hunt was this seventh rounder. Right. Um, so, I mean, I guess I if I had to make one of those other interior line picks, we could assume it would have been another C minus. And maybe you could um, take away my bell curve. A little bit, but I I, I like what, in hindsight, I like how, like, I get an elite athlete edge off the top in the AFC with all those quarterbacks, right, to play off Bosa and Mac and and Staley can, you know, move you around, have some fun things. And then I brought in some toys and and some weapons and solidified what I believe is some corner depth, which both those picks they liked. I'm like smiling at the concept of bringing in Tomlinson in real life right now too, but I don't think, be- um, so I think the trade in hindsight, well, I may have been able to execute that second rounder better. I think it's exactly what the chargers need. Like I would love to do those pick numbers again, but not take the second rounder. I think the chargers could have a great day. And as I mentioned off the top, Rob, the new reality that's going to be on their books next year or whenever that happens, anyone that can contribute in those rookie deals um, will be well, well needed. I do believe the chargers, I am beaten down on what their ceiling can be, how last year ended the inconsistencies of last year. that will do that to someone that cares as much as I do be hard. We'll, we'll get there. That, that spark in my eye will come again. I promise. But I do believe, and I want you to tell me if I'm wrong, honestly, outside of a couple teams, I do believe their floor is really high. Like last year kind of proved that. They didn't play good defense at all outside of one or two games. Herbert was injured. The left tackle was injured. The receivers were never on the field. And they were still exactly where they needed to be when the tournament started. So all that potpourri of things that felt like we're working against them all year, they still got that double digit win total. I do believe with all the excitement about like Jets and Rodgers and other things in the AFC and, and the Chiefs not regressing like a lot of people thought they would, Chargers floor, I think, is as high as I thought that it is, but it's the ceiling that I don't really have the belief in anymore. I hear exactly what you're saying. Elite quarterback, your floor tends to be high. We've seen it time and time again in the NFL. You got an elite quarterback. Doesn't matter if you're surrounded by nothing. You can perform at a high level and get your team to the playoffs in a high level. So I do agree with that. Let's let let's let the let the audience decide whether or not they agree. Chargers high floor or not? And how did Jeff do in the draft? Let us know in the comments below. Of course, if you like the comment, uh, if you like the content today. Like the, you know, smash that like button. It's easy to do. It takes three seconds. Helps people find the content on YouTube. Subscribe to Forward Progress here on YouTube as well. And of course, if you're not subscribed to Hammer HQ on YouTube, do so as well because there will be a live watch along on draft night, April 27th, right from Hammer HQ. I'll be in the chair alongside a bunch of people you've seen on the Forward Progress channel over the course of the last year. We'll watch the draft live. We'll react in real time. Join us for that April 27th on the Hammer HQ YouTube channel. This has been On the Clock with the Los Angeles Chargers here on Forward Progress.